Welcome everyone to the Pixwaz NFL Show. My name is Jacob. This is Andrew. Today we're going to be talking about the Tampa Bay's Buccaneers defense. While the Buccaneers right now sit at four and two, this defense so far has been outstanding. A lot of people talking about how Tom Brady, Chris Godwin, this is the reason why the Bucs have been so good. But no, it's really been this defense. And I'll let Andrew go more in depth. Andrew, why don't you first start talking about this coaching staff? Now they've been able to propel this defense. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Everybody all off season. And it was Brady, what is he going to do with Bruce Arians and Godwin and Evans and Gronkowski, the offense, all the weapons. In reality, it's been the defense carrying this team so far. I think it starts and ends with offensive coordinator Todd Bowles. He earns all the credit in the world. Obviously, his first in as a head coach didn't really work out with the Jets, although I think that might have more to do with them than him. Now he's resurgent. He's shown time and time again that he is a genius as a defensive coordinator schematically. What he's able to do with his unique blitz packages. Just this past week, you saw he had Aaron Rodgers looking like a rookie with all the pressure he was dialing up for him. Rodgers was not able to diagnose it at all. I think Bowles deserves a ton of credit. Bucks fans should be thanking their lucky stars that Bruce Arians has such a strong relationship with Bowles, dating all the way back to their days at Temple, and was able to recruit him to become his defensive coordinator. And another guy on this defensive coaching staff who's not a household name but also deserves a lot of credit is defensive line coach Casey Rogers. This defensive line has been the lifeblood of this defense so far. He has his guys playing at a really high level and he's one of the most highly regarded position coaches in the entire NFL. Guys within the league know Casey Rogers and I think fans should be talking about him a little bit more too. Bowles is a guy who strikes me as someone who's going to be a pretty hot head coaching candidate again soon. Not many people would have thought that towards the end of his days with the Jets, but he's clearly shown that wasn't all his fault. Yeah, absolutely. And now as we look at this personnel on this defense, especially up front, this defensive line, what do you make of these guys? Some big household names up there. Yeah, for sure. They've got some star power on the defensive front. You know, in 2020, everybody loves to talk about passing attacks. Everybody's airing it out. Well, guess what? Games are still won in the trenches. That is where the Buccaneers excel. Guys like Dominican Sue, even though he's 33, he clearly has shown he has plenty left in the tank physically, both as a run stuffer and a pass rusher. Playing next to him at defensive tackle was Vita Vea. He broke his ankle. What does general manager Jason Lick do? He goes right out and makes a trade, none other than the Jets. For Steve McClendon, reunites him with Bowles. He's another good veteran run stuffer. On the edges, they've got Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaquille Barrett, two very good pass rushers. Thanks to them, Tampa has 22 sacks this season. That's second only to the Steelers. You know what, linebacker, you've got Devin White, the first round pick last year. You've got Levante David, who's a stud, one of the most underrated players in the NFL. All those guys are combining to really get into the trenches. They're only giving up 3.0 yards per carry. That is by far the best clip in the entire league. So you really can't argue with what this defensive front's been doing. There's not a whole on it. All right, and now as we look at the secondary, how have they been able to complement this defensive front? Yeah, I think the secondary is really where general manager Jason Licht, you've got to tip your cap to him. This was a guy who himself was on the hot seat after they fired Dirk Cutter a couple years ago. Some people were thinking Licht was going to get bounced out too. He's come back in a big way, especially in the secondary, where virtually all of these guys were his draft picks just within the past couple of years. You know, you've got Jamel Dean, Sean Murphy Bunty at corner, Jordan Whitehead, and uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. in the sec at safety, which looks like they could be one of the next great safety duos. Winfield and Whitehead are 22 and 23. All of their starting cornerbacks are either in their second or third year in the league. You know, these are all guys who were just drafted in 2018, 19, who are 22, 23, and they've got eight interceptions. That's second most in the league behind only the Colts. I think if you're an opposing team or if you're an opposing offense in the NFC South, what really scares you is the fact that this Buccaneers secondary is playing at such a high level, allowing less than seven yards per pass attempt, despite the fact that they are still so young. So rather than a team that might regress over the second half of the season, this feels like a defense that's only going to continue to get better and better, not just down the stretch this season, but next season because of how much youth they're playing, especially on the back end. So watch out for years to come. Yeah, and they certainly play in a competitive division. It will be interesting to see if this defense can keep going through, through week 17. That's our analysis on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.